Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. Inside of today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Queso Cup playoff games up against EXO and Clash. So I won't uh, spoil it, but some really insane games going on there. So before we get into today's video, make sure you use the credit code in the shop. Mine would be greatly appreciated. And without further ado, let's jump straight into it. All right, guys. So jumping into the second game of Splits. So I didn't really want to... I want to show as little games as possible, but it's really hard for me not to show this combo because it's a really off-meta combo. So... Uh, as you can see, we were using Pam, Ego, and it ticks. So we lose the first match on basically literally a mirror. Uh, so we went with the same one because we tried it out in the a few times. And Ego is really good against the Ruffs and the Rico. So I'm going to just push all the way into that spawn there. So in the first game, uh, why do you just sat behind the water? It's really hard for me to do anything. So that's why I kind of pushed all the way into that spawn. So already looking at a little bit sketchy here. Uh, but this is a really nice place. So... I use my gadget to uh, get rid of all of Curse's ammo. He can't use his gadget then uh, to heal up, so we're able to take him down. So uh, the bands also here uh, were Stu and Primo on our end and uh, Sprout and Bell on their end. So again, I'm just going to push up and waste all of their ammo. Curse can't even use... I don't I don't know if you can use your super if you get rid of the ammo. I'm pretty sure you can. Not too sure, but anyways, uh, Tom's going to have his 1v1 with Waddy over there. So I think we're... Uh, well, we're basically even here, but we've got really good control here. Dre just cycling the supers really well. Tom's going to help him uh, over there. So, Dre just doing really well to stay alive. There. Eventually goes down. Uh, so, I think... Uh, actually, no. We're going to keep the right-hand side. So, we should be at the lead here. We've got more percentage on the left than they have the right. So, we only need one more uh, play to win this game. It's, it can be a little bit scary with Edgar, especially if you don't cycle the supers. The main thing... Uh, about it guys like you kind of need to win the game pretty fast right because uh, once roughs tick and rico all get upgrades it's going to be really hard for Edgar to do anything again the black screen uh <laughs> goes and then we get controlled so a uh, really well played from us there uh, but a palm tree obviously want to put it far back and then take shouldn't really be able to do too much again i'm going to push all the way forward into their spawn just cause as much pressure as possible they're both on me here and look how much time i waste there so tom He's just going to have his 1v1 uh, with Wadi over there. But literally all that pressure that I got over there allowed Dredge to push up as well. Dredge is going to jump on in, gets the double kill. And that should uh, basically be GG. Yeah, we're able to get Wadi there. So that's going to be the uh, game right there. So that's going to be 1-1 in this set. Let's hop right into the next one. All right, guys. So jumping into the set point of this game. So I believe we switched out uh, to the roofs. I feel like it was a little bit obvious for them to go surge to counter Ego. Ego is a really good pick. So, what ETP's in here straight away? Probably a bit early of a TP. Goes really low there as well. Uh, but they both push up. Wadi, for some reason, uh, actually goes down the other lane. Uses another TP there as well. So, I definitely think that was a mistake on their end. I believe Wadi should have just stayed down uh, the lane with Curse. Curse got some insane pressure down our lane they should, should have definitely just kept that so why do you already bursted through two tps already got one left i've still got two sandbags left as well uh, so the also ideal scenario really is that surge has a tp left when i have no sandbags left but obviously it's gonna be really hard for him to do too much so uh, we're racking up the percentages here not really too much we can do especially with a surge that is level one we've just got all the control uh dredge gonna be able to get a nice super why do tps on uh tom but tom has his tick head ready he gadgets as well and that's basically going to be uh gg right there there's just no way these guys can uh, come back in that time so that's going to be the first set going to us let's hop into the next set. all right guys so jumping into the uh third game of gem grab as well it went all the way down to the wire here so if you guys want to watch all the games you can just go ahead and go over to uh, the case of cook channel on youtube i think it should show the full replays uh, replays over there but i don't want the video to be too long it'll be like a 50 minute video I believe if I just commentate on every game. So going into the uh, set point again in gem grab. Dredge gets a nice stun of Wadi there. But there's just no way uh, with both of them grouping up. So they've already got the 8-bit turret. I didn't actually see uh, how we got that that quickly. There's just no way we should be feeding 8-bit that super that quickly. Uh, they've got 5 gems already. Gene and 8-bit just going to be going down there. So of course against this combination. Kind of need to uh, split up. A really, really weird comp from them. I've never ever seen... Uh, this combo before especially like gene a bit uh sandy i'm guessing they're just all trying to stay together uh do waste my gene pool right there definitely uh by play on my part I, I was not uh playing the best of genes i had a few pop-off games just before you probably uh if you watch on the stream i did have a few clutch pools but they've already got nine gems we just literally got no pressure down the lanes uh whatsoever uh their mid presence is just a lot more especially with the a bit and yeah, it's, it looked pretty much chalked from here. So I'm just going to go down the left here. Uh, Tom with a really nice super. 
uh cut's gonna be really low i'm just running all the way down left so 10 seconds left here you'd think it's basically over at this point tom luckily gets a super and he's gonna super all the way uh, over there and for some reason uh some bentley didn't use his gadget i don't know why because uh, that would have definitely saved him there there was no way uh, that they would have been able to die but we get the gems luckily enough and we're able to get out so uh you would say that was probably well definitely a choke on their end because they completely dominated they definitely deserve that win but uh unfortunately enough we're not able to close that one out so uh we get the gem grab set right there so yeah i mean kind of lucky on our end so that's gonna be the uh set win 2-0 so far let's hop into the next one all right guys so heading into the final game of brubble again so but well, i think all sets are going down to the wire here so uh going into brubble so i would say that we have a really good matchup here we've got the sandy against the uh, buzz and the bb uh, which is a really good spike as well so i feel like we should definitely be winning this matchup especially over time uh, of course i'm gonna have a bad matchup against both buzz and bb that's the only problem there uh it's kind of hard to decide uh which probably should really go on so drage uses two gadgets up already which is kind of bad really uh because two minutes left it's gonna obviously be a lot more scenarios where you need those gadgets so i'm gonna use my gadget here there's no way these guys are gonna be able to defend it so that's a really nice little goal from us so that's exactly how we should be doing it especially with a spike i uh, should be able to win that one so going into this one as well so the comps before this uh they went like gene max sandy not too sure why that's not really a good combo uh definitely a bit of an error for me i don't know why i pushed into their face i should just held control and that's that's gonna cost us a, a goal there i didn't realize how uh dumb i was to really do that i kind of thought i'd sneak in trying to chain my supers but uh then I'm, I'm just an idiot because buzz just stuns you right i should have just kept my range would have been able to wreck them so uh we can see the really sloppy goal there definitely an error on my part bb's gonna push up here i get really nice super onto yde uh curse just gonna run onto me this way luckily i get my gadget off in time and super him off you guys don't know bb is just an absolutely insane uh counter to rico just mainly because you've got her gadget and her reload speed is just really fast. You can just take down Rico really, really fast. Another super from Tom here. And somehow uh, we let BB get a double kill there. I kind of want to rewatch that because I, I feel like that was probably like... Uh, well, there was an error on both mine and Drage's part. Yeah, that, that's kind of bad. I'm kind of with my super over there. I'm more aiming so uh, towards the other guys. And then Curse just cleans up right there. So that was really unfortunate. Uh, I don't know why we really group together down the right especially considering like a rico on his own should be able to just uh, lock that down the fort but yeah definitely an error on minor dredges part and they're just able to wall that in especially with a poco super so they're able to take the game there uh considering we had the hard counter very dumb on our part we should have definitely closed that out so that's going to be uh 2-1 so far let's hop into the next one all right guys so heading off into the next set so this is factory rush uh, game one so you can see here i've gone for a piper tom on the barley and drage on the spike spike making a bit of a comeback here so i get uh the first gadget off onto cursed i get a nice snipe on there and i think i hit like five shots in a row here so we get three or four five and i think that even six i think that might have been six shots in a row i'm, I'm able to connect on so we get the first robot right here so dredge delayed it long enough so that they can pick it up uh, which obviously barley hard counters uh, spike ridiculously so uh, barley should easily be winning uh, that matchup so i get the kill on some bentley as well so i'm absolutely popping off at the minute on piper i don't think i've hit so many shots in a row before like this tom's gonna get some good damage here uh, honestly i don't know why they really uh, spent uh well didn't really uh defend that one because we dealt 60 percent with round robot which is really rare especially in the first round so I'm going to use my gadget there on Sunday. It feels like they've got like no uh, chemistry here because uh, the curse is all the way over here as a Piper. If I were him, I would have just definitely just died straight away or just wait for his teammate. Like with any other Brula, you can sneak up the lane like that. But with a Piper, you just can't. Like it was in such a bad situation. You should have just died and get a respawn and then pushed out that way. Uh, but we get the robot there. So we basically just get the free robot right there. There's, there's no way these guys are going to be able to defend it as well. Uh, with 40 percent left the mid is opened we've got barley as well so it's going to be uh, really easy to finish it off so that's going to be the win right there did look a little bit sketchy but we're able to finish it off uh let's hop into the next one all right guys so heading into the next game of siege so we switch roles a little bit here so drage is going to go on the piper i'm going to rico and tom on the barley so you can see like we often swap roles quite a lot 
with these types of brawlers. It's just mainly because uh, Droge is a really good piper as well, and I'm uh, probably a little bit more comfortable on Rico. So we're able to get uh, the first bolt right there, which is really, really good. I don't want to burn my gadgets too early, but I'm able to get some really nice ricochets onto some Bentley here. I just love using Rico. Everyone, everyone knows, obviously, of course, I love Rico, but on a map like this, uh, where the lanes are like really uh, narrow, it's just so satisfying to get some nice uh, bounces onto them. So, uh, Sun does use his super there to try and prevent the boss from coming up too much. Uh, why do you interestingly use and slow Dredge with some really nice snipes here? I get some really nice uh, hits onto Curse and Dredge is able to pinch. Uh, I'm just going to stay here for pressure really. There's no way Sun can kill me in this position. So I'm just going to stay around here. Me and Dredge again pinching really, really well. I don't really know what I was doing in this position. I kind of wanted to get some value out of my gadgets. Some Bentley one shot. And yeah, kind of uh, just completely waste that. I should have just sat down that lane still. Uh, but as I said, I was really trying to get some value. I accidentally popped my gadgets, so just trying to go as aggro as possible. I do get the snipe onto Sun there. So uh, we're in a good position. I've got this one bolt in the middle. Uh, that's basically going to equal it up. We've got this bolt uh, that I killed Sun. We're going to easily able to get that one. And uh, we honestly could have finished it on this one. 50% less left on the robot uh, going in. We could have probably just stayed in and finished it, but seeing as... Uh, we're in a 3-2 to two about lead. There's no reason at all to try and risk that one. So, Curse has a super there. Somehow doesn't kill me. He's one shot here. Uh, I think I waste my super. He does go all the way back. Uh, do get a few more taps onto him. We're able to finish him off. So, in this position, I feel like there's no uh, chance that these guys are coming back. Especially YG in the open as a barley. There's just no way that they're able to secure this one. So, we're going to be able to win this one. We do take down XO 3-1. But there's some really close games there. They definitely... Uh, could have uh, made it a little bit closer. The few comps really questionable from us. Like we should have won the brew ball. They should have won the gem grab. So definitely some really close games. Definitely GG's to X. So, but that's going to be uh, the game there. That is a quarter final. Let's hop into the semi final. All right, guys, going into the semi final games up against Clash. So the bands again was Stu, Primo, Gene, and Buzz. So Buzz, a bit of a weird ban on their side. Buzz definitely strong in the meta, but I don't know if he's like a bannable brawler. Maybe. They just really don't want to deal with Buzz because it counters Sprout a lot. So uh, we kind of knew that uh, these guys just absolutely love playing Sprout. Especially uh, considering they've got uh, both Yoshi and Chaos in the game room. It's, uh, it's highly probable that they're going to go Sprout. So we're just continuing with the Leon. Uh, Dredge plays a really good Leon. He's just going to go down there. Uh, so uh, Tom's going to get some good taps onto Gie. So the kind of game plan here, they, they, they really like switch things up. Considering like a sprout normally just goes down that uh, lane that Gie is going down, and Bell obviously goes down mid, but a different strategy probably to try and deal with those Leon gadgets. So Dredge kind of wastes his super there. Uh, the only bad thing about smoke trails is that uh, literally like a few taps, you're going to be so so weak as a Leon, especially like a like any one of those brawlers uh, on their team can essentially free tap him. So got to be really careful there. And the gadget goes down. Uh, do get the tag on Gie though. Uh, so Gear's basically going to be like two shot from any of us. So uh, Gear's doing really well to stay alive here. I've got to be really careful. The thing about Bell uh, on his lane, it obviously looks really easy for me, right? It's just a 1v1, but he's got a grass. It's just really hard knowing where he is for the majority of the part. So I'm going to go down there. Really nice snipe from Gear. Tom gets a slow that should be near enough, uh, uh, enough to take him down. So Tom does go down there, which is fair enough. Drage pops super. A uh, little bit of a waste. I don't really know. I suppose he did confirm the kill and get onto the... Uh, cyber, so uh, we're able to get that down. I get slowed by Jesse, so I'm probably going to get taken down here. So, some nice shots uh, from Yoshi. So, probably a little bit too uh, aggro from his because uh, a lot of well, we're just going straight in over and over again. So, Chaos, he's going to be getting that side. So, we just need to get over on this side. Uh, we've still got 8% to uh, 60. Chaos realizes he's got to come back because we've got two now on their zone. I know Gia is going to be coming up this way, so I'm just going to get some nice taps onto him. Dredge got his super as well on our smoke trails. It's just so, so fast. <laughs> He's able to take down everyone so quickly, so uh, we win the first game right there. Let's hop into the next one. All right, guys, so heading into the next game. So both teams opting for uh, the same combinations. Again, there's not really too much you can go here, considering uh like aggro well buzz is out play buzz is really strong on the right hand lane and just against sprout so they push up straight the way here uh which you realize that uh if you watch the beginning like that uh leon gadget wasn't like behind a wall it's definitely something we discussed afterwards 
because of it. Literally one tap from Gear. It's just going to bounce onto the totem, bounce back onto me, bounce everywhere. It's just going to make me really weak. It's just a really bad spot to put it. And basically makes me lose my mid at the beginning. We've got also Drage does a really good job of catching uh, Jesse off guard, able to take him down. Probably, well, actually, that was a really good play from Drage. I didn't realize uh, but it actually tanked a shot and it allows him to get on uh, the zone. But still, we didn't really get too much time there. They did a really good job of pinching Drage, not allowing him to heal up. So we're going to get pushed back here. Uh, we've got a Sprout Wall. This is just a really bad position to be in because we've got a Sprout Wall. They can just easily shoot into mid. But Tom's doing a good job of uh, just staying behind a wall, staying alive. Uh, Drage with a super here does really well to uh, catch Chaos off guard. And of course, he's going to cycle it. So. Uh, a lot of you guys probably are Leon mains, right? So, you know, uh, on like a 4.2k HP Sprout, as long as you take him down fully, you're going to be able to cycle your super again. So that's really, really crucial. I get the mark on Yoshi, which is really, really important, especially if Drage uh, wants to push up here. So Drage only got one gadget left. We get the lead here by 6%, uh, which on parallel plays is actually a really good uh, percentage to be up in because now you just have to hold control for another 1 minute 30. A lot of times in parallel plays, it's going to go down to the 3 minute mark because a lot it's just like a stalemate very rarely you get like a team wipe and able to capture onto the zone uh so i'm doing a good job of pushing up here i'm trying to get some taps onto both of them Gia getting some nice taps onto mevo on one shot so i've got to kind of fall back here i'm not really used to being in this position down the right normally i'm always uh, on a defensive lane so i do switch my mark onto Gia. uh i don't know why i really switched my mark onto him it's probably because he's a little bit squishier easier to take down uh, Yoshi's going to get slow. There's two really nice taps onto him from Tom. Gears Mark. So again, I know that he's basically too tappable. He's got his super low, so I've got to be careful myself. I'm able to get the two taps onto him. I get the taps onto Yoshi. Maybe if we got Yoshi down. I uh, actually did get Yoshi down right there. Drage going to get slowed by the trap. Unfortunately, doesn't take Chaos down. And that is just super crucial, right? Because if we take Chaos down, we have a 2v1 versus Gie. They're both one shot there. Somehow I missed a shot onto Sprout. Gie is like 30 HP as well. So they all managed to stay alive. Tom goes down as well. So we're in a really bad position here. Yoshi with a turret. Uh, Chaos is really low, but he's just going to push uh, up onto the zone here. I managed to take down Chaos, but yeah, it's just really bad timing from us. It's just a little bit unfortunate. Probably a little bit too aggro from us, but it would have worked out if uh, Drage just managed to get a kill it's just unlucky to be honest they were all one shot and they're able to capitalize capitalize in the end so uh, a few little things uh, didn't go away there if they would have gone away we would have closed down that set to oh uh, but it's gonna be one one in a set let's hop into the next one all right guys so going into the third and final game uh for this set so we're going for the same combination again so i didn't really mention at the beginning that we didn't really scream at these maps well we didn't scream these maps at all i don't think so uh, kind of just going off old combos here, uh, which we use for the qualifiers. I think we did scrim uh, a few times for the XO sets, and we just didn't really bother with these ones. So, uh, yeah, they've got a Byron. Byron's obviously a really underrated brawler in this meta, especially considering uh, there's not a lot of aggro in this kind of meta. Like, the other brawlers that really used to just destroy Byron were like Max. Like, Max combinations used to just destroy him completely, so... That's obviously out of the equation. So, Chaos getting some really nice taps onto me. I get some nice taps onto him. He uses all three gadgets, like, straight away because of how, uh, well, we're getting the taps there. So, Dredge gets a nice trade there. So, I'm going to fall pretty weak. Uh, Yoshi pushing up. He's getting some nice taps onto me. Now, I didn't realize that he could get me in that position. Uh, so, we're going to keep our lane here. Use my gadget in the grass. Uh, he gets two taps onto me, which I didn't think was going to kill me. So somehow that actually kills me. But I think if I would have got a tap onto him, I would have stayed alive because of my shield. Uh, so that slow come in really close there. Allows uh, Tom to heal up. Uh, it basically signals that obviously that Chaos is pushing up. So he's got to then fall back. Uh, those Jesse, Jesse shots just managing to take me down. This is a really scary position to be in. Uh, because not only do we have Tom one shot, we have me down. Uh, so luckily enough, Drage gets his super in time. Uh, so just that super alone just make it just makes them panic like you know leon's invisible right uh you just gotta all fall back and come together as a team so unfortunately there's a trap on me over there i don't know why i used my trap over there to be honest i guess Gia is probably just gonna run over that because i'm not there yeah i definitely should not have done that that's one thing i need to stop doing with bell that's probably like the biggest errors i make is that it's it's not really most optimal especially on a map like this just to use your trap like that because he's just going to run it over especially when i'm one shot he's just going to run it over when i'm not there and it's going to be useless so in this position i really thought it was completely short so i i didn't think would come back here at all they should not 
uh, be able to go down his position. So Yoshi's keeping a really aggro spot. If I was him, I would just sat behind that wall uh, with a Chaos. I don't know why he was really sitting in that position because it just made it really easy for us to pinch, his, uh, pinch him out. Uh, Dredge gets a really nice trade over there, but I'll just run onto the zone. Uh, we need to stay onto the zone basically the entire time. Tom needs to also hold his lane as well, which he did really, really well. So I've got 1v2 over here on my side. Chaos is going to be basically one shot. I'm going to just keep pre fine over him. Uh, Tom's got to keep a 1v2 down his lane as well, which he's doing really well. He's managing to get the slow onto Yoshi. And yeah, there's no way these guys are going to be able to come back now. Dredge playing really, really well, keeping his life uh, really well there. Able to take down the Gie. And we're able to come back. So that was an absolutely insane comeback. I really didn't think would come back there. Everything had to fall into place. Uh, we get the takedowns quickly on our zone. We capitalize on the other side and we like cycle really well. That's just really well played from us. We're able to take down the first set. Let's hop into the next one. All right, guys. So hopping into the first game right here. So you can see here, Bell, Crow and Sprout. So they've got the double throw combo again, uh, which is a very popular choice from Clash. We don't really expect them to go at first game, uh, but they'd go ahead and do so. So normally we send Sprout down the left and the uh, Crow down the right. So we did switch up. I just thought, especially with a Sprout, it's better for me to be in an aggro position than Crow, right? Because uh, Crow's not going to be the carry brawler here. Crow's just normally a brawler, uh, just in case we go any aggro compositions. So I'm going to use my Sprout wall there just to force Yoshi in an uncomfortable position. Remove his grass as well. So get some nice taps onto him. You just see I've uh, been really dominating at the start. I'm going to get some good jukes in. I miss a couple of shots there, which were a bit bad from my end. He's going to use the wall. Not too sure why he really used that there. I'm able to get a nice a double kill. And that's going to be uh, setting into stone uh, the kind of uh, pressure for the game. So the one thing you can't... Oh, that was a really bad wall for me, actually. I don't normally mess that up. But then again, I still get the nice two taps onto uh, Lenane right there. So... Yeah, as I was saying, if you can't lose pressure against that combo, right? It's so hard to push up against a Tick and a Sprout. You do not realize. Tick is so underrated on this map. I won't often use it on, like, Power League or uh, anything like that. But in, in terms of comp, you kind of know that you're going to face off against, like, a Crow or a Spike, right? They're, like, the two most popular choices down the lane. And Tick on this map, there's small choke points. It, it's just really easy to spawn trap on this map, especially if you get first minecart like they did. Uh, so I get some really nice taps onto Yoshi. Yoshi tries to force me down uh, the lane, but I get some incredible taps again onto Lenane. And we're able to basically get the countdown. So I'm just going to kamikaze into the minecart because YOLO. <laughs> I know the game was over anyway, so I just did it regardless. So we're able to take down... Uh, the first game of Minecart Madness right there. Looking really, really good for next games. Let's hop right into one. All right, guys, so heading into the next game. So, uh, as always, like, people really hype up other people's sprouts. Like, Yoshi's sprout's also really good. But not enough people really talk uh, about my sprout. But my sprout's been good for the longest time. It's just uh, people are only just realizing that now uh, that it's good for some reason. But, yeah, we uh, we'll go for this combination. The reason why we went with this one is because we were kind of scared that... They would bring out the aggro but in it basically uh the, like the recent comps that they scrimmed they had like a uh, a max sandy pam they had a few more aggro combos so we're really worried about they would bring out one of those and like clash other type of team to go aggro so we didn't really want to go like a sprout again we really felt they'll go like a carl or again like a pam or a sandy and if you guys know like any type of aggro against a sprout and if they have the first minecart, they're going to be able to win. So nice snipe from Dredge there. I got aggro on the Sprout. I'm able to take him down as well. Uh, I'm in a pretty bad position. I need to heal up. Honestly, we should have uh, probably switched lanes here. So the kind of mistake that we made at the start was that I sent the bell on the uh, Sprout. I'm going to get pinched out uh, really heavily here. But we still got our mid and our lane in Tom. But yeah, as I said, we should definitely just send a Crow on the sprout i just can't do anything against the sprout right especially he's just hiding behind a wall at least crow's got a little bit more movement speed he can juke his way up to the wall so i'm gonna get jumps on by gear there i think i get another tap on yoshi before i die uh, but sprout in this position is just too too much dredge he's gonna be really low here uh i feel like he actually i don't really know he's just in a bad position there unfortunately yoshi's just got so much uh, position on us yoshi is one shot here but they're gonna be able to get the countdown so i think more so it's just a comp again from us but uh, if you if you guys have been watching uh comp right now 
you can't always get the composition right. It, like some compositions can be pretty dumb, uh, obviously, but for the majority of the part, a lot of times it's just going to be uh, whoever has matchup will end up winning. So they definitely have the uh, account comp there, but it's, it's definitely a winnable matchup. We have the pipe to open up the walls, uh, but I think it's just our composition at the start. Uh, we should have got uh, the bell down the left against the crow. I can free tap crow bell really good against crow. And uh, Crow is okay against Sprouts, so definitely wrong matchups at the start, but we take down, uh, well, we lose that game right there. Let's hop into the next one. All right, guys, so heading into the next one. So we wanted to go into aggro comp. There's no buzz. We were really unsure what to really go, so uh, we thought the BB and the Ma uh, BB Max Pound would be good. But unfortunately, they do get that first minecart, which really is going to like set the tail of the game, mainly because uh, like if we get first minecart against the Sprout, I think it's basically GG, right? Because uh, any type of aggro, if you've uh, experienced it before playing Sprout or just watching competitive, especially if you push up close to those walls, they're not they're not going to be able to kill like a BB. They're not going to be able to kill like a Pam. It's going to be so, so hard for them to do that. So they also get control. I also just think overall that Max is just not a great pick in gem grabber anymore. Like, uh, so, well, with Gene Band, you probably can play a bit more Max. Uh, they cl clash always ban gene but uh against like a bell i've always kind of said it uh, bell free taps max right and also you get the ricocheted shots i just don't really like uh max against this composition they have a crow as well so they've definitely got the counter here um uh, i kind of yeah as i said i was kind of scared that they'll go a counter to sprout again so we really didn't uh want to go that sprout comp but i think that's just good against everything right we've got the bell and crow to deal with everything we've got sprout to deal with uh, be more squishy brawlers, so we kind of get wrecked inside of this game. A comp that we didn't practice, we just kind of thought uh, that it work on the fly, and it really doesn't. So uh, yeah, I think that's just basically it's not scrimming uh, to kind of know a lot of compositions to use on this map. Else we probably would have just stuck to our guns, and it worked so well in the first game. But obviously in hindsight, uh, we should have just done that, right? <laughs> so that's gonna be uh, the gem grab set. Uh, one one currently let's hop into the next one all right guys so hopping into the first game of brubble so we go with uh the aggro composition again i'm not too sure about the bb uh don't really obviously ruin it but i don't think bb was the optimal choice bb was pretty good in the poker double tank comp uh some time ago but i think like bull or frank would have been better obviously uh primo's banned so we can't go to primo so we actually have a good matchup here we've got mortis up against a b and a barley so mortis should do really really well here as long as the spike doesn't follow the uh, mortis around, it should be uh, pretty decent. Dredge going to get taken down there. Not too much we can do in this position, especially if, it, again, it's all down. It can be hard for a, a mortis if the B has, like, 3k. Uh, but I think over time, once you get that first bat, you should be able to cycle really well. All of them are squishy as well, so all you literally need is that one pop-off moment. We just need to uh, break the resistance literally at once. And we should be able to chain, especially if you get, like, a poker super as well. Uh, Morse shouldn't be able to die, so I'm not going to waste that super on Tom. He's slowed. Uh, there's no way we're going to be able to get out of that. I do use the super on Trey. She gets absolutely deleted, though. Uh, this is really worrying for us. It looks like we're going to concede. Chaos goes for a, a wild trick shot. I don't know what he's really doing there, but yeah, he goes for that. Dredge gets down that slow. Uh, so again, BB like, on paper looks really good. I mean, it's a good bubble from Tom. Uh, but I just think like a Frank with super or a Bull with super would be able to close down the gap a lot quicker. And that's what we're really missing here, right? Because uh, both Mortis and BB just couldn't get close to him. Like if we had a Frank with super with so much pressure, it would have been fine. But BB has no pressure on this map. Uh, Mortis without super has no pressure. So the thing we're really struggling with here is that we really need to just pop off, right? Like Tom can't do anything. Uh, he's a BB get up against a spike. Like he's just going to get absolutely destroyed the entire game. Uh, the only way we're going to be able to do anything is if, uh, as I said, Drage is able to carry us. So, 30 seconds left. Uh, still no um, Mois bats from uh, Drage, unfortunately. Uh, 30 seconds to try and make something happen. I think it's pretty close. So, we did get the B down. So, I believe he's probably like one dash away from those bats. Tom there just trying to buy as much time as possible. 15 seconds left here. So it's still not all over. Drage gets the kill onto Spike. We really need to go here though. Uh, I think we left it a little bit late. 10 seconds left. That's a, I think you need at least like 12 seconds to get the ball out of the corner and score. So uh, Dredge does get a nice bounce here. Uh, but yeah, we're not able to convert. So uh, we do go down there. But I think that was more than a winnable matchup on our end. 
Uh, maybe if I switched to BB for something else, as I said, could have been a lot better. And we definitely needed like the Mortis to get his bats a lot earlier because all of them are squishy, right? If you get a couple of chains, all of them are going to be like one shot. That's going to be really easy for like a Poco or any other tank to uh, get them down. So unfortunately, we do lose the first game right there. Let's hop into the next one. All right, guys, so heading into the next game. So you're probably thinking... Well, that comp that they're using is completely troll, but they're definitely using this combo because we just played uh, aggro just terribly. I, I think most teams know that we really don't play uh, aggro too, too well. So we go with aggro again. Obviously, something that we need to improve on a lot is our aggro compositions. Dynamite does get us down here. It's such a scary situation to be in. Luckily, Tom gets that double uh, Frank super. I really thought that we're going to concede here. Tom goes for the super. I thought... Uh, wow, wait. okay, that's how it went down. I was like, Tom, you're surely going to score this right. And then as time gone uh, went on, I was like, okay, maybe he hasn't scored. So obviously against Triple Throw, there should be no way we're able to lose this one. So I get the kill onto him, get the kill onto him. I get my super back and I'm able to super kick it in. So obviously I don't think there's any way that those guys can win. Completely hold um, uh, counter. So they obviously thought, the reason why they went that right, I'll quickly explain it. So they thought we're going to go uh, back to like a B and a Barley. Uh, you've got to sprout to deal with the barley that uh, uh you've got to sprout to deal with the b in the middle just completely hard counters uh you've got barley versus any other brawl in the game really just really good and then dynamite to counter uh like a barley or something else as well like triple throw would normally just destroys uh the actual meta comp on this map but it's risky as you've seen because uh, we went down aggro, so yeah, we're gonna go 1-1 one, one in Brubble. Let's hop into the next one. All right, guys, so heading into the next game of Brubble. So they go with a really weird combo. I've I've not seen anyone go this again. Uh, if I've not tried it out, uh, Max or Sandy and scrims too much. I, like, I've never seen this before uh, for such a long time. So obviously they were really expecting us to go uh, either a Sprout mid. I believe, yeah. I don't know what we're trying to counter with the Max and Sandy. I'm, I'm guessing they would have fought for the um, Sprout in mid, surely, because uh, Max just completely folds Sprout in the middle. Uh, Max actually does a good job uh, with B in the middle as well. My bear does push them back. But the thing is, I don't really cycle my super. I think I can play a good Nita, but I've not really played Nita enough uh, lane to kind of know uh, the ins and outs about her. So... Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to defend this at all, but I'm close to super uh, right there. So I think maybe I just got to go aggro no matter what down my lane. Again, I just, I've just i never faced this kind of composition with Nita. Normally, I'm the mid brawler, right? Normally, I'm the one uh, playing B. And I know for sure that Drage does have a hard matchup in the middle uh, because Max is just able to wiggle around a lot easier. So I get my super right there. Maybe I should have just pushed up with the bear. So that's twice now where I've not pushed up with a bear, but it's kind of hard considering... Uh, they got like a sandy super in that moment and the other time it was just to relieve pressure on a 1v3 moment uh, but definitely should be capitalizing more on my bears so i'm gonna get destroyed by the barley there and there's just no way we're able to save this so yeah they're gonna take the brubble uh right there really unfortunate from us i definitely thought uh, we could win literally all the sets right there which is good signs right because normally a lot of times uh we're kind of just uh there's a lot of like bad errors or whatever but i really think it's just the uh, switch up of combos if we've got the right cycle probably would have been able to uh, be like 2 1 up in this scenario so uh, we do go down there uh, to 1 let's hop into the next set. all right guys so going into the fourth set so siege uh probably one of our weaker game modes right and now clash one of their strongest ones i believe i feel like they always play siege really well so they're going with a sprout in the middle i've not really seen sprout used too much here uh, to be honest again uh, I don't really know over like, the past week. I've not really played this map too much. Like The standard combination is the one that we use or uh, Sandy instead of a Spike. So kind of went by that. I'm guessing the Sprouts to counter the Barley and the Rico maybe. I'm not entirely sure. So uh, Yoshi uses that wall on there. Takes down Tom. Tom gets the gadget though on Drage. Really nice slow from Drage. Able to catch Sandy down there. So I'm just going to go really aggro on the Sprout. Sprout is really weak. I use my Super just for... Uh, a little bit of pressure there. Chaos gets a nice uh, super onto Tom, but Tom takes him down quite easily. So uh, playing it really, really well here. I'm just going to try and keep on that Sprout as much as possible. I've got one gadget left. So obviously, like once my gadgets are used, Sprout does counter me. But whilst I've still got them, they're fine. So I'm going to go down to Chaos there. But it's fine because I got a trade onto Yoshi. I didn't really care too much about Chaos. I just wanted to get uh, Yoshi down. He's going to be the one that's going to be patrolling most of the map. So we actually got the 
uh, bolt lead here. So we know we have to finish it in this scenario. Uh, so it's a bit of a sketchy place to be in. Like normally last spot wins right. They've got a sprout worn defense as well. Uh, so the lane gets uh, clipped right there from uh, Drage. Uh, Yoshi, I have a no idea why he didn't use Sprout Wall. Uh, really dumb decision from him, I think. Like, look, look at the damage we can deal right here. It's just, just absolutely melted, especially with Spike, Rico, and Barley on offense. So I think that was an error on their point. Uh, their point. There's just no reason to save Sprout Wall at all. Considering the defense they have, they have a Sprout, Sandy, uh, who was dead. And only a Rico live. They're not going to be able to defend that without that Sprout Wall. So we're able to take down that Siege game right there. Let's hop into the next one. All right, guys. So heading into the next game. So this was really weird from them. They actually brought out Moist, uh, which I was completely surprised about because we never. I don't think. I think we've gone Sprout like once here in the uh, API like a few weeks ago, I think, when we tried it out. Uh, the API, by the way, is just like all the games in which we play over. Uh, like that's how analysts, analysts analyze, right? They get uh, your details from like brawl stats or something like that. And that's what it's called, it, like an API system. So, yeah, as I was saying, we just never go this type of combo. So, Mortis just completely hard houses uh, just from seeing it straight away. Like, Mortis should be able to win this. So, I use my Sprout Wall there. I uh, use another one there. So, I'll use one gadget, which is fair enough. Rico gets a super onto it. Ike, we're going to try and heal up. So, of course, the best match we can get, right? Is that Rico on the Mortis? So Mortis just going to use his dash to get onto me. He's really, really weak here. So I'm able to get him down. So that's really well played from us. I'm just going to forget about that bolt. Try and push uh, back Yoshi. But uh, that super kind of prevents me from going backwards. Mortis is just going to absolutely destroy me. Like I don't have any gadgets to heal up. I don't have a shield. I'm just going to get wrecked even harder. Uh, but somehow we win this round. I have no idea how we actually managed to win that. So we're actually not in the worst position. Drage gets a really nice kill onto Yoshi there. Uh, Lenane gets a good double kill though. That is a really nice play from him. He always just manages, uh, even like as as you saw, like he wasn't really doing uh, too, too much. He was just kind of distracting. Uh, but just literally one moment is all he needs just to get a really nice kill. So they defend that really well as well because obviously like, none of us uh, getting... Uh, any damage onto them. They ain't doing a good job of staying alive here. I'm just going to use another Sprout Wall. I thought that would block off the entire part, uh, but it doesn't actually. So Lenane just going to continue to dash in. I'm just going to block him off here just because uh, I know that I'm basically dead here. So I think Lenane did just an amazing job again, just staying alive, uh, just collecting the bolts. That's all you really need to do with Mortis on Siege is just collect those bolts and just go for your matchup. A lot of time when people bring out Mortis, there's always going to be something that's going to be a favorable matchup for him. So they're going to be able to take home uh, that game right there. Going into match point for them. Let's hop in right into it. All right, guys. So heading into the final game of Siege. So obviously match point uh, for Clash, but set point for both teams. So definitely can get this onto a set five. We're going to be looking at pretty decent. So we go the BB. Main reason for this one. We thought it will probably go back to Sprout. And also B was just really good against Rico. Decent against Barley if Barley doesn't use slow. And yeah, that's kind of the main reason for that. So Dredge does a good job of getting Chaos low here. I'm just going to go extremely aggro onto these guys. Going to get taken down here. So I kind of just waste my gadget there, which isn't the best. So I don't want to use another one to stay alive. Uh, definitely could have been in a little bit better position, but still not the end of the world. We're at two bolts to one uh, going into the second of Siege. So again, we don't really want to feed that Sandy Super. Dredge just doing a good job here. Uh, the callouts here really is just trying to get Drage onto that Rico. I can take the Sandy fairly decently, especially with my gadgets. Uh, so uh, yeah, Lelane's going to go really, really weak here. Drage obviously realizes that. You can just basically two-shot him. I'll just use my super there just to confirm the kill. They get the heals, but I'm just going to go extremely aggro here. Uh, it's best just to go as aggro as possible. Uh, Chaos going to go uh, kill Drage there. Managed to pop a really good gadget, uh, which was a nice play from him, but I'm able to get the trade. We're able to get this siege as well. So we're just getting insane pressure here. Definitely playing siege a lot better this time around. Uh, we're going to be chipping down chaos. There's no way we're going to be able to get that one. So I'm just going to try and stay alive. Lenane uh, does nearly manage to catch me off guard. Uh, probably a little bit too aggro from him. I mean, he's keeping two of his backs to be fair. It's actually uh, fairly decent. Chaos goes down. Don't see how he goes down there. And we just know we can finish this off. Especially with a barley and a Rico. BB with a bubble. Yeah, it's just really nice from us. We're able to capitalize really, really well there. So Siege 
100% some improvements from us. Going into the third, uh, fifth set here, let's hop right into it. All right, guys, so heading into the uh, last set here, so dry season. Again, we just kind of want to switch up our combos a lot. The most popular comp is like a rough double thrower uh, with gene bands. So kind of wanted to just test this one out. Drake's doing a really good job of tapping Yoshi here, but uh, definitely not the optimal matchup for us. Sprout just completely wrecks a roofs and a bell. I'm going to get taken down here. Chaos is one shot. We really should have got that kill there. Uh, he was so, so close to going down. Uh, so in this scenario, we can't really push a Sprout. It's all about that first interaction, right? I, I don't know how we could have done a lot differently there. Maybe uh, just get me on a Sprout regardless. The thing about roofs is obviously I'll get to free tap by uh, that Sprout. So here, I'm just going to skip through this because we're just sitting here. Again, HP, we know. We're just going to fear them stars if we keep going forward at this point. So we're just waiting for the last uh, few moments to try and get a kill. Uh, obviously, they've got three traps right there. Again, that could have probably been uh, discussed in VC. I'm guessing we just didn't know those traps right there because Dredge walks straight into it. He's going to get taken down really easily there. So I guess against the bell, you kind of have to just go right because they've got their traps just sitting there. So when, there's no way we're going to be able to win it in this scenario. Uh, yeah, it goes down uh, five seconds for... Yeah, there's just no way we're going to be able to get any really kill, any kills there. So, be able to take down that game right there. It's basically a hard counter. Uh, not too much we can do, especially if we lose that first interaction. It's really hard for us to come back. So, if we do lose that one, let's hop into the next one. All right, guys. So, heading into the second game of Bounty Events. So, we've gone with the uh, wall break option here up against the same composition. So, we know uh we've not really practiced uh this combination for sure but we know that clash love this combo uh, so that's why we used it it's just good against everything so with brock you want to be using two gadgets at least to break their walls right that's one thing we discussed uh straight away uh with brock either you need to uh guarantee yourself to get the super so we kind of want to use that gadget if someone's really low or you know you can uh, basically get your super to break up more so that's what we want to be doing brock unfortunately we don't get a kill in the first interaction which we should really be trying to do uh, especially with like a piper gadget with a brock gadget probably should be trying to coordinate uh from both us trying to get them down so tom does destroy that lane here so he should be using uh the gadget on probably like the left wall at least but we destroy our own wall here uh which i definitely do not agree with uh for sure so it's going to be a uh, thing we talk about after like we know uh, for certain if we use this type of combination you can't use it on our own defensive walls right uh like obviously a sprout's gonna destroy us uh but yoshi wasn't really doing that much pressure like if we can just sit behind our walls and just juke our way and just heal up slowly get a few shots break open them up as it goes up it's gonna be fine right so if we still had our gadgets uh like destroying their back walls it would be so much better but in this scenario we're screwed, right? Like, like, what can we do in this scenario? They're just sitting behind a wall. Uh, both throwers is just basically short to this point. I, I use the super to break open uh, one of the bits as well. But yeah, we definitely lost the games uh, from the gadgets alone, which is a bit, a bit unfortunate uh, because in, in this scenario, we'd, we could be, would be in this comp quite easily. But yeah, no way we're able to win from this position unless we get a full team wipe. Uh, so I jump in here. I know the Sprout can't really kill me at close range, so I'm just going to try and ignore Yoshi, uh, get down Chaos, but yeah, there's just too much for us to do uh, right there, so unfortunately we do lose right there, so yeah, as I said, uh, something really easy to fix up, just save those Brock gadgets uh, for the defensive walls, you still got another one to break open the mid walls, we don't need to touch our walls at all, unless they're literally in our spawn, killing us, that's the only reason we need to use that, so yeah, unfortunately we lose to Clash, uh, some easy really mistakes to fix up on so overall looking uh really good going forward of course uh, we do lose again uh but it's a lot more convincing than beforehand definitely in the right mentality going forward so that's going to be uh some good games right there playing brewmasters over on twitch later today the last chance qualifies so make sure to check that one out uh if you're not aware of it already but yeah that's going to be it for today's video guys hope you enjoyed don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys next time